Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War unification cast to this side of East Yorkshire. And today I've got two games for you. First game being a one versus one, and it's on Deadly Fun Archaeology. Playing on the right side as the Tower Empire, we've got Vrax. And playing on the left side as the Chaos Space Marines, we've got the Happening. Happening will be opening up with double cultists and a Chaos Temple, whereas Vrax is going to go for a couple of Stealth Suit teams, a Plasma Generator, and a Tower Barracks. I do have to say, there's been a significant amount of Chaos Space Marine games, and well, Chaos Space Marines, Space Marines in general, just very adept and starty heavy on the channel as of late. It makes me think of, oh, it must have been about a year and a bit ago now, when the channel was invaded by Orcs for a good solid two weeks, where every single game had nothing but Orcs in there. I mean, yeah, fair play, we were also doing a um, Tug of War campaign where the Orcs were a major proponent of the games of that, but still, it was uh, almost like an Eldar phase as well, which, uh, which much to everyone's sh shock and chagrin. But that's fine, so first game, uh, there's these only really short games, maybe about 15 games apiece, but sometimes people do send short games in. I don't like to send in or play, um, uh, like, very short games. Often, as they don't really do all that well on YouTube, so I save them for, you know, to do them back-to-back. -back. So here's the plan. Got some Vespid Stingwing Strains. They're going to come out. They're going to see what they can do. Cultists probably won't do all that well against them. Chaos Lord is coming out of the temple, though, so he should be able to... Slap these boys and girls away. Does first bits have agendas? I'm not entirely sure. The Chaos Lord is certainly going to slap them silly, regardless of whether they're boys or girls. Listening post over here. About to be finished up by the Dancing Heretic. But the Heretic will be alive for much longer. It looked like he was about to accept his fate for a second then. And Oh, is he going to survive? That's the question. He's, he's running as fast as he can. And he might potentially do it. He's a mad lad. Bobbing and weaving. Oh, no, he's gone back the other way. The full oh, no, never mind. It works. Somehow. My goodness. Go on, Chaos Lord. Oh, heartbreak. Oh, you Rex, you cruel man. Should have left that heretic alone. What a shame. Anyway, the colors are going to try and get revenge for our boy who's dead, but these guys are not going to stick around. They're just going to leapfrog over these cultists and then decide to kill another heretic. Oh, the humanity. Oh, the heresy. Although, I managed to kill the stealth suit team, so not bad. Purple viscous icor decorating the floor. Do manage to kill that heretic. And oh, there's another one. Oh, is it the same one? Different one? I don't know. Either way, they're on a mission. I've got some regular old Chaos Space Marines. These guys will be able to stand toe to toe with the Vespids. Much nicer, much easier. I'm going to force them to fly away as the Chaos Lord tries to keep up with them. They're not giving up. They're going to keep on keeping on. They're on a harassment campaign. Also got a tower commander over here. So it does seem that Vrax is being a little bit more aggressive than happening. Making sure that he's staying on his side of the map. Making sure that the fighting is happening over on this side. Killing heretics left, right and centre as I assume he's building up all his own stuff. Yes, he is indeed. Although he yet to capture this strategic point over there. That's fine. Happening managing to capture his over here, though. The Vespid's on their own. Oh, no, never mind. They've got the Tower Commander with them now. Doing all right, although the Chaos Lord has caught up with the Tower Commander. Only a couple of swipes of his sword. The significant damage to him. Just to fly away. Vespid's relatively low on health at the moment. Three models that are quite low on health. Got some cultists. Coming over with some shiny eyes. So I'll be able to see any infiltrated shenanigans. But once these listing posts are up, and they've got their shooty bits on, found the Fire Warriors backing them up. There's not much they can really do. And the Force of Chaos have actually weathered that storm quite nicely. They've got all their listing posts up. They've, you know, they've only lost a couple of builder units, but they're kind of they're quite cheap, all things considered. And they've now also got Tier 2 on the go as well. Rax, are you getting your tier 2 up? You are just about, yep, starting now. With the Vespid still on the go. Good value from them, to be honest. But they won't be able to do all that much now. They are going to actually go around the backside, destabilise that listening post. As the Tower Commander tries to distract these guys as best he can. The fly over into the heavy cover over here. The tainted all specs can place down so the Chaos Lord can see some Infiltrated stealth suits in the critical location. Gonna keep that tower commander on the move there. 
do not want him to be involved in anything. The close range department, listening post about to be built up by these double aircast builders. Prime real estate, police car space means to start shooting up. Because Lord, not giving this tower commander an inch of of peace, of, of space. Tier 2 about to finish. Fire Warrior team on the way. Tier 2 about to finish for the Chaos Space Marines. Now, normally, I'd say Vindicator, that's the way forward, but for... This could build all that up against. I'm not sure vehicles are the play to make. I'm not sure at all. I mean, personally, I, well, I suppose it depends on how quickly Vrax gets his Fire Warriors on the go. He's going to get another Tower Commander. Tier 2 has finished for him. Mainly it's these Vespids that you need to take care of. Something mobile. Well, you can see the Fawn Princess. Okay, the power of anime compels them. Able to move quite quickly. Also, some of the Iconoclast Lumin women, whatever you call that unit. Which are also quite nimble and mobile. This Hefkast Builder unable to really maneuver out of their range. Well, the colour is at the moment. 104 and 30 compared to 86 and 10. So the Chaos forces are a little bit behind, but over here, I've been pushed away from the Tau side of things. I've killed this strategic point there, so that is something. Got a huge amount of blue to play with there. Yeah, I would say that in this current situation, you're in tier 2, you've got plenty of blue. A infantry heavy build will probably be what the Doctor ordered, at least for now. Yeah, a couple of Havocs out. Or just regular Space Marines for now. In fact, you could probably get like two or three squads out. No worries at all. Build them up. Just have like a front line at the moment. Yeah, will the Fire Warriors be able to win a firefight in the long run? Yes, absolutely. But better to spend that money on something than nothing at all. Okay, uh, Armoury if you need to. I mean, you've lost the strategic point back over here. Connor class zealots looking for a couple of sisters, sisters of slaughter, but they are 25 green and they've still only got one plasma generator. So actually, never mind what I just said. A couple more plasma generators would also help quite a lot as well. But only one fire warrior squad at the moment. We've got some infiltrated suits manoeuvring around the sides. Scouts will, uh, not scouts, sorry. The cultists will be able to see them there. And there we go. <laughs> A blue money dump, three plasma generators attempting to be built up. Wouldn't normally recommend doing it like that, but, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. Cultist been shot up good and proper. And now the Fire Warrior team firing line begins to form. Frax just always on the back lines, not giving these strategic points a length of time to chill out on. Heretics are able to survive some of the incoming damage, considering that these guys do very little in the way of damage until they get their fusion blasters out. Tainted all specs coming on, allowing the Chaos Lord to see these stealth suit teams. Does not take long at all to crack them open like a cold one on a Sunday evening. When leaving him alone, just show him mercy, I guess. Fawn Princess jumping straight into the Fire Warriors. Good amount of manoeuvring. Been slurred by those snare traps there. Also been spotted by the Pathfinders. So these zealots will be killed quite a lot quicker. And the Fawn Princess tying up that Tau Commander around the backside. So need to, need to keep these guys on the move, really. Need to keep them at a good, healthy distance. And then just focus on one person at a time. There we go. The Fawn Princess has been snared. And will be potentially shot down. Well, yeah, even the missile throwing her backwards a little bit. So Fawn Princess has gone down. Iconoclasts. If there's squad wipe now, they won't be able to come back until that princess comes back online. Stealth suits flying away. And the listening post finally back up. This upgrade listing post has been surrounded by the dead of the Vespids. And now the Fire Warriors laying siege upon this section of the map. They've got their Pathfinders. In fact, what's your vision like at the moment? Yeah, those Pathfinders 
Huge amount of vision going for them. Able to see everything going on. Also got these stealth suits down over on this side as well, so listening posts will be taken care of. Yeah, I, f I think infantry focus, because again, like, you get like a vindicator or anything like that. And these stealthy stealth suits will be able to just basically fly up to them and kill them more or less straight away. Hellblades, maybe. Hellblades, maybe. But I don't think a vindicator is the answer, even if there is a lot of infantry at the moment. Pawn Princess, a couple of Havocs, maybe even a couple of Raptors. Yes, that's what I'd say. Mobile melee, supported by some long-range infantry. That's that's what I'd say the Doctor would order in this situation. Pawn Princess, regardless of being snared, still jumps in. Chaos Lord just not caring about the incoming fire. He's going to walk over and do what he wants. Over here, stealth suits being harassed and harried by the cultists. What's coming out of you? It is a Defiler. All right, okay, Defiler. For the long-range artillery. Not these fire warriors about. Also potential for melee, should they wish. One princess massively overextending herself. She's quite a nimble... Qu nimble? Nimble unit. But even her jumpiness can't save her from all the incoming fire. And the constant snaring. The snaring and caring. Everyone seems to just be... There we go. Finally killed her. Seems to have just been staring at her for a second then. I mean, simps trying to get some points with my lady. That's not how Warhammer works. No, Warhammer works anywhere. But lots of cultists the chase after... Those stealth suits, they were not anticipating getting in contact with that many cultists that quickly. The father not really... Oh, no, there you go. You are firing. Good stuff. That does a good amount of damage against the Pathfinders. Zealots running forward. Again being snared. Really nice snares from uh, Vrax this game so far. All seeing some stealth suits being bothered by the cultists over here. It's at least distracting some of the... Um, Defiler's Artillery Fire. Also going to go for Heavy Butter to replace its Flare Map. To further increase its long-range support capacity. Very nice. Stealth suits are not enjoying the artillery at all. Really harshing their mellow. Yeah, actually, this Defiler, a really good life choice. Going to go for another one as well. I mean, why not? Economies are currently 134 and 50 compared to 74 and 60. So actually, the economic downturn for the Chaos Space Marines is not that great in all things. Really, really behind in the economy. Although, they've got a good amount of chaff. Cultists, more cultists, iconoclasts. You've got a Chaos Armoury. Sacrificial Cycle as well. Chaos Armoury, I mean, grenade launchers then, surely. You just you just go for the Defiler launcher opening. I mean, it's not the opening, but something to transition to while you've got no money. To try and test it, build from vanilla all the way around the world. Defiler edges its way forward. Like a crab at the beach, surrounded by sand. Hungry to fire in. Can you guys see anything? Nowhere near seeing anything. Let's move forward to capture the critical location. Fire that. It's not necessarily one to be on the front lines for this. Not when there's other stabbier units that can get involved. Fire that. Been uh, flanked by the. Stealth suits, but are be going to be pummeled by the Fawn Princess. Nice little anticipation for the flanking there. Pathfinders staying on the flanks. Once again, spotting these zealots. Chaos Lord just trying to screen these girls. But unable to really contend with the incoming damage. Maybe we'll have to sending him in on a self-ending mission. 
just to keep those guys active. They have the XV8 Christ battle suits. And it does seem that victory is slowly but surely gripping, or should I say slipping, from Happening's fingers at the moment. If he is going to start pushing back, start getting himself back up on his two feet, it's more or less now as the Tau are in Tier 3, I do believe. Is it Tier 3 that you're in now? Yep, Tier 3 now. So they've really got to, Chaos has really got to start making some impacts. Taking down some tech buildings, doing something like that, just to get back on par with the Tau. But the Zealots aren't going to be enough. I don't even feel like the Tafars are going to be enough. Artillery is always good, but you never win a war with artillery. It's always something nice to have on top of what you already have. Might change the tide of battle. Might give you that edge in the long term kind of battles, but in short term burst damage, taking on specific targets. They ain't going to win you no Nobel Peace Prizes. Or just any prize for that matter. Price battle suits fly away. Leaving the regular Fire Warriors just to open absolute mayhem on this defiler. Even though they're not designed to kill um, vehicles. Still kind of works for them. Got a horror squad in the sacrificial cycle. Not sure why. There's no vehicles to be seen unless Unification changes these guys. No, they're still heavy infantry. This is too much. So not even the horrors are going to do all that much unless they are summoned around the flanks and take on a building or something. When I mean, you've got the money, Mr. Happening, you've got the pennies. I'm going to buy a Chaos Predator. Not sure how I feel about that. I mean, I mean, look, look at this, right? These girls could just walk in, cause all sorts of havoc. You want a couple of units like this? I could just walk in and cause all sorts of havoc, like corn berserkers or raptors. Well, and that's it. This whole environment would just be knackered, wouldn't it? But hey ho, such as the way of dawn of war. Never really quite know what people are going to do, and even when the uh, decision of what to do is quite clear it is quite hard to make those life choices in the middle of a game so many things to take into consideration what to build when to push what kind of compositions complement what you already have versus what the opponent already has versus what they are going to get depending on what you get the ebb and flow of an RTS Brings a smile to my heart that people are good enough to play it to at least this level. At the very least, because I can't certainly play it to this level. You've seen me play before. By now, I would have crumbled into dust. But I think in the tournament when I was playing against Drax a little while ago, never got to an 18 minute game like we have now, and there's still plenty more minutes to go. Potentially. Or maybe there isn't. Ooh. No spoilers for you, young man or woman. Curse Lord, unable to really catch up with the XP of Christ battle suits, but combination of artillery and a predator. Killing a lot of those fire warriors. Taking out a good chunk of those Christ battle suits as well. And now come the horrors. Alright, maybe everything that I said about these guys, I'm about to eat my own hat. Eat my own words over this. Because that is just the perfect timing for them to come in. Maybe the happening just knew that he was about to win. He just felt it in his burns. And if there was ever a way to destroy buildings quite quickly, it's certainly with this combination of artillery, fawn princess, and the pink horrors. We've got pathfinders and also some fire warriors hanging around the Montka command post. I mean, what kind of economy has Drax got at the moment? He's got, he's got a respectable economy, but, like, he's losing his listing posts. Doesn't have nearly as much as Happening has got saved up. Some Barracudas are going to be thrown into the mix. What do you do in this situation? You've got your Firewall. Well, Firewall is keep them in the heavy cover. Get them to focus on these horror squads at the very least just to protect your tech. 
The Zealots constantly in, in battle. Maybe the uh, um, crew would, would have been an option earlier on in the game. And then later on, transitioning them over into uh, the Delphish troop carriers. Make sure that you snipe away these infiltration detection cultist squads. Oh, is not a bad idea, though. Not a bad idea at all. Good against vehicles. Also really against lightly armoured infantry as well. Especially these infantry that are primarily pistol based. So I'll do an incredible amount of damage to an aircraft of all things. Do have a broadside battle suit? Oh, because there's lots of defilers, fair enough. They're very brave, because we know that these zealots are still going to be knocking around. Really going to focus these guys down ASAP. The amount of value that Happening has had from these ladies is just bonkers.com. The broadside battle suit getting a good few licks in for slowly being whittled down himself. More fire warriors on the way. A solid defence there. Losing that tier 3 building there. That's a major blurt of Rax right there. I mean, he doesn't have... I mean, he's got vehicle money, I suppose. But he's lost his vehicle beacon. Which is a sad time for him. Now the purple marches into... Tau base. Barracuda sitting round the back, but... A whole bunch of horrors... It's a horrible thing for him to deal with. If you're pardon the punt. There we go, hiding in the trees. That's where the aircraft really shine. Dawn of War. In the shrubberies. Up on the distant canopies. Above our heads. But what a turnaround. Looking at the slightly less efficient way of him spending money. Actually, having all that money saved up and then managing to beat Vrex back just a little bit in the centre down here. With those defile of our artilleries and the predators. And he had the coffers, he had the funds, saved up. Like a kid going to a Wednesday market, and well, he just cashed it all in, didn't he? And moved forward, so. Very good game. Very good game indeed. Okay, like I said, in fact, I thought this game was only going to be 17 minutes, so in theory, I shouldn't really do another game, I should just leave this here. But I did promise a back to back game so i'll do another one so i'll see you in two seconds all right then here we are in game number two we've got focus as the death guard up northern side on fatamorga and we have got custom king the southern side playing as the chaos space marines once again like i say it's another chaos space marine kind of theme game we've also seen some more death guard which I and mean, even on the patreon we saw some death guard as well so like i said very chaosy a chaotic start to the new year but it's all good fun i don't mind it whatsoever i'm just grateful that people Still sending games after the blooming nearly two years. Very nearly. I, mean, I think I'm going to say that it's definitely going to be the 22nd of this year. In which it'll be my second year birthday of doing this kind of stuff on the YouTube. So, hey ho, we shall crack on and carry on. What's the opening for you guys then? You're going to go for Chaos Space Marines. Regular units and a Chaos Lord. So, there's plenty of capping stuff to capture all this stuff. I'm going to go over here to avoid those flipping cultists. So we've got a little bit of a, of a chiller opening. We've got two plague zombie hordes. I think I mentioned in the, in the game the other day that we didn't see zombie hordes for quite some time uh, when the Death Guard came out. I know in the past month or so, we're seeing a major switch from uh, the seventh Death Company over to the first and second where the plague zombies are. Major vibes. Now, these guys, are they going to be useful against these guys? I mean, maybe. Certainly good as like a pop-up kind of defense. You know, these guys start invading maybe this strategic point over here or a distant relic over here. And then you just basically pop down to plague zombies and start slapping around. That might be a thing. That might be a thing. But generally, even Stevens in the early game, I do believe Death Guard versus Chaos Space Marines. Nothing really too much to write home about. The Chaos Lord and the uh, Plague Lord are quite even when it comes to bashing each other around the chops. Do you think that the Death Guard have a little bit of an advantage considering that the first company allows him to do AoE damage over time to anyone nearby him? Cultist on the other hand though, 
they've got more flexibility. I think. I mean, yeah, these guys have got melter guns and grenade launchers. But these guys have got plasma guns. It's in the later stages of the game. When there's more heavy infantry, the Chaos Undivided cultist, I reckon, will be a lot more useful. Guns coming things, but oh, no, he is. Uh, the commands of the relic, but that's a lot of very silent, tippy tappy of the feet. As the plague zombies give them the old Michael Jackson shuffle, chase them down, killing a couple. We spread the no one's getting them anytime soon. They're just running away as best they can. Got space for and yeah, there we go. So it's like a mobile defense force. Is are these plague zombies? The night lords going to struggle against them. I mean, they'll do more damage, but there's more of these guys. And the more damage the plague zombies do, the longer they stand around for. One single cause. Oh dear, oh dear, run! Quickly, have a fr There we go, he's got a friend now, he's fine. These plague zombies, they, they build up quickly, don't they? All of a sudden you only see one squad, and then all of a sudden it's two. And inside the base, actually, we are seeing the Nagel cultists. So you might, okay, well, you can go and sell our, well, you can go and press our side them as much as you want, but we can just walk in and do things. The so Nagel cutst over here being wiped out by that shooty bit on top of that listening burst. Trying to go for those plasma generators, but they don't do amazing uh, vehicle damage or building damage, sorry. Heavy bottle took it down over on this side to protect the listing posts. Is that a. Yeah, that's a listing post for the. Um, Chaos and Divide. I thought that was a Death Guard thing for a second then, but no, not quite. We are men no There's more. constant Great -grandfather badness going on down here. Not sure why he keeps on moving at these cultists down over on this side. He can just decide to not have them in within range of, the, of this listing post by the looks of it. He's going to start retreating. He's done what he can, which isn't much with the uh, cultists. There's at least been a bit of a, a nuisance here. We've seen the Temple of Disease, a Plague Lord on the way out. Oh, I suppose, yeah, because folks at the moment has only been doing things with zombies and cultists. That's interesting. Great -grandfather wishes. No cultists. Looking to have another couple of shots off at these undivided cultists. But the Chaos Space Marines should, in theory, be able to bully them away. Especially when this Chaos Lord comes around and say hello. That's a lot of cultists of the Nurgle variety. Gathering around the relic, ready to automatically take it the moment that it's time. Oh no, potentially not. No, oh, that... Oh, right, okay, there we go. The Game of Chance. The game of Chance pop a listening post down on that. Not quite. Now more zombies have been summoned. More over on this side as well. It's like Shaun of the Dead. But this time they can't go to the Winchester and have a pint. Went for all this to blow over. There's no Winchester in the 41st millennium. At least I assume. Back up normal being placed on here. Oh, I saw a comment the other day that I was going to reply to. I didn't reply to it because I was I was busy and I said, oh, I'll, I'll do it later, but completely forgot. So they were wondering, what does the Feckled Normal do? It just kind of just sits on. Basically, this is kind of like a turret, yeah? It sit, sits around as AoE damage to people that come near it. And after a while, this little bar goes up and then when it sees an enemy, it'll fire a bloody tree at them. And then that's that's what it does. It fires trees at people. And also just generally smells bad and makes people sad. And that is how it works as a relatively short medium range turret. There we go. I know things. I've probably got some of that information wrong, but I mean, that would require me knowing how this game works, and good lord. Can't expect me to do that, can you? That's lord in the middle of all these Chaos Space Marines, just unsure of really what to do with this plague zombie horde. And the other one that's coming up the backside as well. Plague Lord chasing after these zombies as well. Trying to get in on the action. Back up normal, being shot up and soon to be shot down by... Listing post over here. Are men no more. But looks like Focus has taken over the uh, relic for the Chaos Space Marines. They've been led on a merry goose chase around this structure. 
Well, these guys, yeah, it's just a case of, well, there's, the zombies, we can't beat them in close combat. So may as well just run around at least distracting them. Or are they distracting us? That's the question. Tier 2 on the way. Oh, it's got squad capacity increase. Havocs, I imagine. Plague zombies. Havocs. That'd be my guess. Tier 2 about to finish a lot quicker. Custom King, though. I suppose that the biggest counter to Plague Zombie Hordes would be some Hell Talons. That would be my prediction. Going for the machine pit. Let's see if we can do it again. Doing all right with my predictions so far on the channel for quite some time now. Let's see if I can pull another seance out my backside. Is it a seance when you predict the future? No, a seance when you talk to the dead. What do you call it? A crystal ball time? Magic 8 ball time? More of an, more of an 8 ball kind of guy myself, to be fair. Cultist and Cultist action over here as the Plague Lord slowly rips his way through the listening post. He's been there for quite some time. Plague zombies just keeping on, keeping on. Machine Pet has finished. Come to economy is 92 and 20. Compared to 98 and 50. And no, it's the Vindicate. Ah, boo. Boo, Custom King. Oh, I was going to be so correct as well. Until I wasn't. That's no fun. I don't like this game anymore. I've decided. I'm going to go and play Rage Shadow Legend or something instead. Plague Havoc's on the way. I got, I got that prediction correct. Plague Havoc's. Can't really not go for them at any point. And oh dear, this Chaos Vindicator. There's going to be a lot of friendly fire involved in this. Well, I suppose the Nightlords don't really care about friendly fire. I don't care at all. No, there's some Helltowns coming in now, but it doesn't feel as real. And actually, this one tank is going to be the perfect counter against all these plague zombies. Not much that they can do about it. Yeah, one shot. And most of those zombies are either half health, low health, or, or dead. Big Lord still cracking along with this. Someone put our boy out of his misery. Can you at least just let him have it? And the kid's going on deleting things. Deleting and yeeting. Wanton vandalism of the Death Lord. Finally. Or well, the Plague Lord even, sorry. Finally catching up. But one. Keep him going. We're seeing a Bane Pit down here and a Bloated Rhino. Bloated Rhino, I imagine, to keep the Plague Havocs all mobile and stuff. Not sure why I built the Bane Pit down over here. But that's where it is. Gosh darn it. Double Plague Havocs with the car Space Marines undivided cornered in such a way one volley of missiles most of them missing to be fair most of them missing Cultists with their shotguns firing away oh, have you got like a little charge animation now Mr. Plague Zombie Hard seemed like it for a second then Bane Pit soon to be the lame pit as it gets taken back to rubble. Triple Hell Talons now. So yeah, the Plague Zombies will really struggle against those. And the Rhino Transport actually will do as well. Plague Gavit should be able to take them on quite nicely, but... I mean, one volley... How much damage did that do to, to you guys? A fair bit of damage. But it can always just fly away. Bloated Rhino. Trying to destroy these Chaos Space Marines with the Vindicator and a regular Chaos Rhino. Showing him who's boss. While that's going on, these Helltons can just fly over into Focus's base and start mincing around with all his economic buildings. Big Zombie's dying thick and fast. Not thinking fast enough, all things considered. They've been alive for most of the game. It's very rare for a Plague Zombie Horde. You normally see players just A move it in one direction and leave it to die. These guys also keep coming back. Not ready to go off into the next life. 
to go quietly in that good night. Good lord, just kill him. For goodness sake, just turn all guns to him. There we go. That was quite so much effort. Like Havoc's been dropped off right in front of a Chaos Vindicator. Triple Helltones falling down upon this bloated Viner. While more plague zombies are coming in. We've also got more Rhinos. Well, it seems like they're just coming in just to block them from moving forward. Solid wall of tanks, man. Being just things to cross with. Even if they are just Rhinos. The plague Havocs shot down one by one. Only one left. Should have really started running away. And Defile as well, as well. It's looking very Chaos Undivided. Favoured at the moment. What do you guys got going on? You've got a bit of money. Oh, you're going to go for tier 3, I see. That's why there's no major follow-ups to this. They're spending all their money on tier 3. I'm assuming then, with all this money saved, up buying some tier 3 units. Which will be totally fine if Custom King decides to not invade at this very moment in time, which it does look like he is wanting to do. I would say even just like maybe a couple of, well, not even a couple, just one Havoc squad just to keep these boys at bay. we are just saying that. Do you have any lads inside yet? No, you don't. You're just a bluff. Make them fear, yep. That's where the advice would be for the Night Lords. Do have a bot fly, which is not designed to be good against vehicles or buildings. According to its unit term, uh, unit card, it does have last cans of its own. It also has Havocs moving forward. Alright, so they're building up a counter build. A right, Plague Havoc squad again coming out. And with that putrid missile upgrade, they're now also good against infantry, so it doesn't really matter what your opponent goes for. Havocs are always a godsend. But one Chaos Space Marine squad, one Havoc squad, a Rhino and a Defiler, as well as a load of armor over on this side as well. Well, before I see these guys, Ugh, do apologize. Long day recording, as usual. Listening post goes down. The Bane Pet's been built up again, but no new buildings. Or vehicles, even. Well, let's be fair, Focus does not have the Mosh. Uh, mosh? The Dosh. The Wonga, the capital, to build up anything substantial. What fly there? Managed to snipe out Helltown with the help of a Plague Havoc squad. All the sheer amount of firepower coming from the southern side here. Ripping apart whatever was charging towards. What were you? The man in yellow pajamas. Fair enough. Very intimidating stuff. One of Nagel's gifts, I imagine. Doesn't buy proper gifts, just socks and pyjamas for Christmas. Well, the Bane Pit looks like it's on the way out. And the Force of Chaos are pushing up on the right hand side. One Plague Havoc squad is not going to stand up against Havocs of all kinds of varieties. They are going to fall back. To a more defensible position. Another squad over here taking out the Helltons one by one. Maybe they're going to come over just to take part in their glory. Oh no. Oh, one shot from that Vindicator. Killing three of them. Maiming one other. And he hasn't gone down, but it's still not ideal. Possessed Marine squad. They're quite lethal. An auto reinforced. It does seem like Focus is. Putting his last herp on these Forsaken. Not Forsaken, sorry, that's uh, that's War, uh, Warhammer Fantasy. The possessed Marines are definitely, yeah. A Hail Mary Pass. Speaking of a Hail Mary Pass, I'm uh, taking part in a Blood Bowl tournament at some point today when the video goes live. Maybe when this goes live, I'll be in the middle of taking part in the game. I'm playing as a Hobbit team, expecting not to win. It's not about winning as Hobbits, it's about scoring one one touchdown. 
That's the main thing. But yeah, Custom King, he's brought the picnic. He's giving out sandwiches for free. You know, this. I think taking up. It was, it was a bit of a weird game. Plague Zombies were amazing at the beginning, but then as we were fading off, we didn't really transition into anything new, to be honest. There wasn't really a real strong economy from Focus all the way through with that, but hey ho, such is the way of things. So thank you guys for sending in these games via the Discord and also via the DMs as well. Uh, the Discord links are in the description as well as the Patreon. Uh, if you spend £1 a month, you get one extra game a week. All the usual stuff. Uh, Mazda Miss Lunchark, pleasure's always never short, and I'll see you in a bit. Peace.